You're welcome to the platform that will equip, motivate, and mobilize Christians to step up and uh, transform their community for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want also just know that we want to do it through prayer and compassionate it. That's the goal of us to reach our community for the Lord Jesus. And I think that's actually what Jesus Christ wants us to do. You know, I, I was reading the Bible. Uh, have you been to a situation whereby you are reading the Bible and you get a portion of the Bible and it looks as if, though you've read it so many times, and it, and it jump out of the out of the book, and you see it, there is a kind of a new revelation that comes to you. And you say, wow, as if you've never read it before. This is what happened to me with this portion of the Bible that I want to just share with us today. Uh, it's in John chapter 20, verse 21. John chapter 20, verse 21. Jesus, after the resurrection, for the first time, meeting the disciples, and he said to them, that verse 21, I'm reading from Amplified Bible. It says, then Jesus said to them again, peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. Uh, Amplified Bible says, as my representatives. You know what really came out of that when I read it? It's, I was it, I, I began to just think through that statement. As the Father has sent me, I also sent you. In other words, we are on the same commission as God commissioned Jesus Christ for his assignment. He commissioned us to do not below, not beneath. He says exactly the same thing. He wants us to do. No wonder he said in John chapter 14, and he said that, you see, the work you see me doing, you will do, but even greater than this work, you will do. Before we start unraveling this statement, there are some points I want us to just look into. Because if we are going to be the representative of Jesus Christ, as he is the representative of his father, who is also our father, then we need to go deeper, not just only for us preaching. I believe it's far more than that. When he says that, as the father has sent me, so I'm also sending you. Because first of all, what we need to ask ourselves is, how, is, how, how was he born? How was Jesus Christ born? If we are born the same way, then we can say we can represent him the same way. We all know that Jesus was born of the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 1 verse uh, 35 declared, it says, The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the only one to be born will be called the Son of God. The point you want to understand there is that the Holy Spirit came upon Mary and the power of the Most High overshadowed her. And out of her comes the Holy One, the Lord Jesus Christ. How are you, I mean, became born again? John chapter 3 verse 5 says, Jesus answered, I speak an eternal truth. Unless you are born of water and the Spirit, you will never enter the kingdom of God. In other words, Jesus was born of the Holy Spirit, overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, and then born of the Holy Spirit. And we, you and me, were also born of the Holy Spirit. We are coming to something very important here. As the Father have sent me, so I am sending you. So we are on a commission that is not lower than that of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is to transform our community. Before I move further, uh, you know, I, I, I want us to just listen very carefully to what I want to share with you. And that is the, the base of what we want to do as a ministry. Listen to this and then I come back. I want you to imagine, just for a moment, 
Imagine your street. Every house and every flat, every man, woman and child living on your street. They're your co-workers, your classmates, your neighbours. And now imagine if every house, family and person were to be prayed for over every day for an entire year. If every street in your city was being prayed for daily over the next 12 months. What would you see? We believe you would see transformations come about. Opportunities will present themselves and souls will come to know the one and only Saviour, Jesus Christ. Your streets will be ignited with a fire of heaven that will transform your city for the kingdom of God. Adopt a Street is not a program but a lifestyle. It's about changing the spiritual climate in your community, inviting God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's time for us to pray for our neighbours instead of complaining about them. It's time for us to display the love of God instead of just talking about it. It's time to adopt a street today. You're welcome back. As we've heard there that what we want to do is not just one of. We want us to develop a lifestyle of which we are taking our community for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to be part of that. I want you to sign into it that your community is of God. We want to see revival, not just only out there, but starting with you. And that's what we want to do. Now, let's go back to the commissioning of the Lord Jesus Christ and how you also, you and me were also commissioned. And I believe that our commissioning is also not less than that of Jesus Christ. Let's look at what the Bible says in Luke chapter 4, verse 14, and 14 to 16. Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit. And news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogue and everyone praised him. Listen to that point, that verse 14. He returned from the wilderness. In the power of the Holy Spirit. Now it's filled with the power of God. It's not just only one that went. When he went into the wilderness. Luke chapter 4, chapter 4 says that. He went full of the Holy Spirit. But by the time he's coming back. The Bible says he was also filled. And full of the power of the Holy Spirit. Ready for the work of the ministry. What about you? What about me? I think uh, Acts chapter 1 verse 8 also gave us an inkling on how we also are commissioned. Jesus himself declared here, he says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the heart. So you will be... People and you say you will be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. You will be free, you will receive power of the Holy Spirit, and it is after that then you begin to minister. Remember, Jesus came out of the power of the Holy Spirit and he began to minister, and the power of God was was manifesting in everything you do. Now, you as a child of the living God, you have been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. What will have happened? I was just thinking about this. What will have happened after Jesus came out of the power of the Holy Spirit and he just sat down and said, Oh, I'm filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm full of the Holy Spirit and not do something with what he has been given. I think that's the difference between us and the difference between Christ, the Christians, uh, the follower of Jesus Christ and our master. He came out and he began to exercise the authority that God has given to him. Now listen to it. He started where he was based in Galilee. Don't forget that he moved to Galilee when he came out of Egypt. So the same thing I believe that before we can win the whole world, God wants us to start from our community. Are you getting it now? God wants us to start from our community. It's true you are called to the world. It's true that you are an evangelist of the world. It's true that you want to intercede for the whole world. But what about you starting 
with your community? What about you starting with your neighbor? What about you starting with the streets you are in? You know, when you start there, then you secure your community, you secure your domain. If those of us that understand, some of us that understand the cosmic geography, you understand that your area, if it's not well secure, then you fall into the Adamic uh, mistake. Adam was given heaven, the heavens and the earth and even underneath. But because he was not able to take care of <clears throat> the garden, he missed everything. How about you? Jesus said that we will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon us. And then we begin to minister. And I believe that Jesus wants us to do. What is this doing there? That Jesus wants us to represent him in our community. I believe it's very important. There are three major offices that Jesus occupy, of which you also you are occupying. The first, Jesus is king. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 16, the Bible says he has been, he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. The same Revelation chapter 1, verse 6 declared, Revelation chapter 1, verse 6, book of Revelation, it says, God has made us as kings and we will reign here on earth. So God has given you the same mantle. Jesus is the king of kings and you are a king under Jesus Christ. You see now, as he has sent me, so I'm sending you. He commissioned as the king of kings. And then you are commissioned as the king, the one with authority to have dominion over your area. In praying and not allowing the enemy to take any food ground, to hold any, any ground in your area. Jesus is a priest. The Bible calls him the high priest. Jesus is our high priest. And the same thing that you know, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, and you are a royal priesthood. And you are a child of God, a royal priesthood to represent God. I just paraphrase that one, that you are a royal priesthood. That is in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. So you represent God before people. And you also represent your community before Almighty God. That's the role of of a priest to be the representative of your community before God bringing them before God and praying to God for something to happen Jesus is a prophet is not a prophet Jesus is the prophet Hebrew chapter 1 made us to know that in the past God has spoken through the prophet and every, but now is speaking prophetically through his son so Jesus is our prophet and you know what? You too, you have the mantle, the prophetic mantle to speak into your community. When we think about community, when I'm talking about you being a prophet, I'm not talking about you holding one of the fivefold of men, fivefold ministry. But I'm talking about if you have the word of God and you speak the word of God, the word of God is a prophetic word. As you speak it over your community, as you speak it and you release it into your community, you are prophesying to your community. There are two dimensions of prophecy. There is the foretelling and there is also the, the, the foretelling. You foretell what will happen, but there is also one that you foretell. You speak it. And what God wants us to do, you and me, is to look into your community and say, this community belongs to Jesus. You, you wake up in the morning and you bless your community. You release blessing into your community. You know, that also reminds me of Joshua chapter 1. The Bible says, wherever you put the toe of your foot on, I've given you. Do you know God has given you your street? Hallelujah. God has given you your community. Don't allow the enemy to have any foothold. I will say it once again. Don't allow the enemy to take anyone in your community to the kingdom of hell. You have the right to take control. You have the right to say that no, no devil, we have no right in my community. That's what God is calling us to. We thank God for 
for revival that we have thousands and we are renting stadiums. But before we rent the stadium and before we use the stadium, let's use our community, our street. Take over your street in prayer. Let it be your assignment. Go before God. Say, Lord, I have this assignment and I'm praying that, Lord, that this community you have given me, Lord, we, we, I will see the kingdom of God established in this community. I want to round up with this uh, testimony. A great man of God in Africa, when he went on a placement, it was just a three-month placement to one village. If I mention the name, everybody will know him. So he went to that, that, that village just for a placement. He got there and he found out that there was no single church there. And he said to God, I said, Lord, let it not be written that I came to this village and I left without a church of the living God there. Right there, he started in the small room that was given to him to just share Bible and pray with people. And there and there, within three months, he was able to establish a church and he handed it over to the community leader there. When he was going, they gave him what is called in Africa, lantern. That he should go that he, has, he brought light into their community. You know, what that light that was given to him that time has lightened the entire world now. You don't know what will happen when you begin to take, you begin to just take it as your own responsibility to start praying for your community. I challenge you this morning and I, and I, and I ask you, join with me. Let us begin to pray for our street. Let's begin to pray for the schools in our street. Let's begin to pray for people living in our street, people working in our street, and the entire community. Let's, you can just adopt two. Let's say one or two. Adopt your, your, the place you are living and also adopt the street you are working. Or maybe other places. If you, if you want, just adopt as many streets as you can and say that I want to be praying for this street. I want to see God, the kingdom of God, being established in the, in the, in the street. And as you see that, as you do that, you will see the move of God. Out of that, who knows? Go my race, Billy Graham. Who knows? The next prime minister might come out of your, out of your prayer point, out of your place you are praying. Hallelujah. This is what I just want us to just do as the people. And as I want to close right now, let's just, before I pray, let me play once again the clip and now we come back again. I want you to imagine, just for a moment, imagine your street, every house and every flat, every man, woman and child living on your street. They're your co-workers, your classmates, your neighbours. And now imagine if every house, family and person were to be prayed for over every day for an entire year. If every street in your city was being prayed for daily over the next 12 months. What would you see? We believe you would see transformations come about. Opportunities will present themselves and souls will come to know the one and only Saviour, Jesus Christ. Your streets will be ignited with a fire of heaven that will transform your city for the kingdom of God. Adopt a Street is not a program but a lifestyle. It's about changing the spiritual climate in your community, inviting God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's time for us to pray for our neighbours instead of complaining about them. It's time for us to display the love of God instead of just talking about it. It's time to adopt a street today. Hallelujah. You've watched that. This is a challenge. And I'm just inviting you. Just email us or go to our website. Like I've said, I have the prayer point for this week. The, the prophetic word you will speak into your community. Go to our website and download it and you will see you, you've been blessed. We will soon start seeing results. Hallelujah. Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for every listener today. I release the blessing of God to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I pray as you take up this 
mantle. I declare and I decree in the name of Jesus, there will be transformation in your house, in your life, in your community, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I come against whatever might be interest in your life. I, I declare and I decree that the blessing of the Lord comes to your life. You are healed, you are blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus. I say what? God bless you. Bye.